よろしくお願いしましょうレッツゴー WWL TV presents From Tragedy to Triumph The Musical Bridge Between New Orleans and Japan This is Narita Airport and today musician Yoshio Toyama and his entourage are waiting for some very special guests from New Orleans 16 young people from different walks of life with a common goal to make and share music in Japan This trip is a culmination of a dream Yoshio and the Tipitinas Foundation have been working on for years. For the young New Orleanians, most of them in their teens, this is the trip of a lifetime. Eight students from O'Perry Walker High School under the direction of Wilbert Rawlins and eight Tipitinas interns with their mentor, Donald Harrison. They've all come to Japan to share a gift that'll bond people from two different worlds together with music, New Orleans music. <laughs> When the great earthquake and tsunami hit northern Japan, it was a disaster New Orleanians understood. In 2005, we lived through Katrina, and back then, the Japanese helped in our recovery. For Yoshio and his wife Keiko, even before Katrina, they'd been coming to New Orleans for years, actually making an appearance on the Eyewitness Morning News more than a decade ago. Yoshio Toyama, is that correct? Yeah. Good. Yoshio has become a Satchmo Fest favorite here, and more importantly, through his wonderful World of Jazz program, has been bringing musical instruments to New Orleans school kids for years. The Tipitinas Foundation was doing similar work, getting instruments into the hands of school kids, but there was really no connection. <laughs> Then the tsunami hit, and the Tipitinas Foundation wanted to help replace instruments Japanese kids lost in the disaster. So they contacted Yoshio. The instruments were delivered and the bond was made. And that's what this trip to Japan is all about a cultural exchange of music and a chance for these young New Orleanians to bond with Japanese youngsters halfway around the world. They may not speak the same language, but they have several things in common. They've all lived through a disaster and have all had their lives changed through music. Most of the New Orleans kids have never been out of the country. Some have never even flown before. But now they have a chance to be ambassadors of New Orleans music in a foreign land. My name is Jerron Williams. It's Devin Lee. It's Jordan Johnson. George Bob Brown. Terrence Knockham. Joseph Knox. It's Chewie's Hill. Justin Walker. It's John Michael Bradford. It's Ruben Weber. It's Raymond Weber. Max Moran. William Hightower. Darryl Staves Jr. Joe Dyson. It's Hunter Bergamy. The first taste of their new title as music ambassadors will come the next day after a two hour bus trip to northeastern Japan. Behind me is part of the port city of Ishinomaki on the Japanese Pacific coast. It was a thriving neighborhood at one time, but the tsunami and earthquake wiped out thousands of homes here. On this day, the kids from New Orleans will be coming here to try and give these people some relief through their music. When the great tsunami hit Ashinomaki, it caused indescribable destruction. More than 3,000 lives were lost in this city, and over 500 people are still unaccounted for. The relentless waters ran boats and cars into this bridge, and it was here where the boys' bus stopped and where their music would hopefully lift the spirits of these people who had been through so much. But before they performed. <laughs> They'd rehearse with a local band, the Ashinomaki Junior Jazz Orchestra. And since this is their first meeting with people from an area so ravaged by the tsunami, there was much in common for the boys from New Orleans and their Japanese counterparts. There was clearly a language barrier, but definitely a connection, summed up very well by John Michael Bradford. It's a true honor to be able to play for these、uh, other musicians, and it's a great experience to hear. You know,、um, the younger generation come up and play music、um, with a future of music, and it's good to keep the music going alive. And、uh, it's awesome that we can relate through music and we can understand each other. While the interpreter spoke to the Japanese kids in their native tongue, John Michael showed off some of the Japanese he learned. Ohio! <laughs> Arigato! After some rehearsal, 
a bit of musical instruction by Donald Harrison, then a lesson in brass band music by the O. Perry Walker kids. The boys were given t-shirts from the U.S. Embassy in Japan. They read Tomodachi, which means friendship. Outside, there was a festival going on, organized by many of the prefectures of northern Japan, which are like our states. They're here to support the people of Ashinomaki and bring some happiness in their struggle to rebuild. The New Orleans boys will perform today, but they first get a chance to mingle with the crowd, sample some of the food, and be entertained by a Japanese pop band. And when two of the O. Perry Walker students made their way to the front of the stage, they stole the show. Konnichiwa. I am very happy to be here in Japan. And to bring New Orleans music here. And that's the reason the O. Perry Walker students and the Tipitina's interns are here, to share New Orleans music. And they did, starting with a song the interns wrote. Their music had crossed all language barriers. These people in Ashidomaki enjoyed, understood, and appreciated the skills of these young New Orleans musicians. Let's go! Then it was time for the O. Perry Walker Chosen Ones Brass Band to kick things up a notch. And by the time the Tips interns and the O. Perry Walker Brass Band joined Yoshio, the Japanese, who were normally a very reserved people, got into the spirit and it became a real New Orleans festival. A Japanese-American volunteer relief worker who came here to help in the rebuilding effort said, this festival is designed to lift spirits, and with these young New Orleanians, that mission was accomplished. And I think the, the beauty of the reciprocal relationship that's going to start now between the kids here and your kids from New Orleans, hopefully it will be a building of a great relationship and through the musical bridge, you know, to really bring uh, support, warmth, and love to each other in communities. And music truly is the international language and it does bring cultures together. Absolutely. And music transcends language, um, culture. I, culture, politics. It is the best unifier to bring together the human spirit together. And so they made people in, in the Shinomaki happy today. Absolutely. Everybody was elated. I think uh, they were taken a bit, a bit by surprise to the emotion and the enthusiasm. But once everything came together and started to go, everybody jumped right in and got into it. It was a wonderful day for the young ambassadors from New Orleans and for the people of Shinomaki. On this day, everybody spoke the same language. For the 16 young New Orleanians on their musical adventure here in Japan, another day for them began with a bus trip to the city of Kasanuma, another area devastated by the great tsunami. Kasanuma is a thriving port city, famous in Japan for its fishing industry. Here in Kasanuma Bay, massive fishing boats line the shore, and from the looks of things now, it's hard to believe just how much recovery has happened here since the 2011 tsunami roared through this city. When the tsunami hit Kasanuma Harbor, the surging wall of water ripped ships from their moorings, carrying them on shore. Then floodwaters began pouring into the city. In all, more than a thousand lives were lost here, and hundreds more are still unaccounted for. Here in the city of Kasanuma, we're about a half mile or so from the harbor. When the tsunami hit here, it roared through this area. There's nothing left but slabs where houses once stood. And behind me, a massive ship that stands as a monument to what happened to this town. The young New Orleans musicians have come to Casanuma mostly to meet with the Swing Dolphins. They're a group of young children the Tipitinas Foundation supplied with new instruments to replace the ones they lost in the tsunami. On this day, they're getting a first-hand look at the destruction in Casanuma. At the ship that's been left as a monument, they meet a man whose business was here in the area where the vessel now stands. He tells the boys his grandchild plays trombone with the swing dolphins, and he's grateful they're here. 
The boys are clearly moved by the magnitude of the destruction here, looking at the cars and parts of buildings still under the massive ship. The foundation is probably with someone's house or something, a store or something. You see somebody's car behind you. And to pay their respects, New Orleans style, they've decided to play a dirge to honor the dead. Just hearing this music, just, you know, like I said, music is, is what emotions sound like. You know, just hearing it, it's a sad song. When the young New Orleans musicians meet the Swing Dolphins, there's a special bond. Not only do they share the love of music, the band's instruments were a gift from New Orleans and the Tipitinas Foundation. It's customary in Japan to exchange gifts, and the Swing Dolphins give their visitors, what else, little dolphins, and the boys gave them the Tips O. Perry Walker patches they wore here. There's no need for translation today, they were just kids bonding. Outside in Kesunuma, there is another festival going on where the O. Perry Walker Brass Band, the Tipitina's interns, and the Swing Dolphins will all perform. The young New Orleanians are impressed by their even younger Japanese counterparts and are anxious to play with them, but first, there's a speech that touches everyone's heart. One of the Swing Dolphins tells the crowd how shiny new instruments came to her and her band after the tsunami. She then tells the crowd, to the people of New Orleans, thank you very much. And the people here are grateful to New Orleans for helping the Swing Dolphins and for sending the young people to Casanuma to entertain. Donald Harrison with the Tips Foundation tells the crowd he's always loved dolphins and swinging music. So now I am very happy to know that there are Swing Dolphins. Domo arigato, Yoshi. Domo arigato, everyone. I love you. The crowd loved it when the Tips interns joined the Swing Dolphins on stage for some New Orleans music. If you wonder, did a bit of New Orleans coming to Kesanuma touch any lives? Well, a man who lives here came up to us with a handwritten note that said, the music today made many people happy. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, this is so, it's just very touching. That's pretty cool. And the show wasn't over yet. The O. Perry Walker Chosen Ones Brass Band wrapped up the festival. As good as these young New Orleans musicians made the people of Casanuma feel, it went both ways. Yeah, I feel that the band did an excellent job uh, entertaining the people and uh, playing our best, playing what we do, what we do. And you know, if you were here to lift spirits, you did just that today. Yes, I, yes, I, I believe we did. It's a great moment in, uh, in Japan to be playing music, so the music is speaking to the Japanese people. Like, like we really don't understand their language, but the music help us to bring us together. If you're from New Orleans, you have you ever been in New Orleans? If you see, if you see a typical brass band, you, you could be the, the most quiet person. But if you hear that music, you're gonna tap your feet. You're gonna do something. You're gonna do something. The music just speaks to you. On this day, the music spoke to everyone. As the sun said, it was time for a photo op and for kids to be kids. No interpreter needed here. Just happy faces and lots of laughs. For the young New Orleans musicians, it was handshakes and then back on the bus for another road trip to another destination. But in Casanuma, they leave behind some now excited and very devoted fans. When the young New Orleans music ambassadors get to the city of Sendai, they have several hours of free time. Their schedule's been pretty hectic over the past several days with train and bus trips, loading and unloading their instruments, and lots of rehearsals and concerts. So some free time in a big city with plenty to see is a real treat. And while they're soaking up the culture, these are still American teenagers. What Japanese delicacy did you have for lunch? 
McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> you come all the way to Japan and where do you want to go? McDonald's. Uh, that's just a date, though, Eric. That's just a date. Oh, they've had a couple of Happy Meals. Hey, I, had, uh, I, I was trying to do a burger. It was a teriyaki burger. <laughs> oh, my God. That Sendai is a large city with a big shopping area and all kinds of foreign sites these young New Orleanians can take in. Although much of their shopping is centered around things they already know. Some of the boys bought iPad and iPhone cases as their souvenirs from Japan, while others visited a music store. While it's hard to tell now in downtown Sendai, this city was hit hard by the earthquake and tsunami. This was the scene inside the newsroom at Sendai TV on the day the earthquake hit. It was terrifying. The damage was far greater, though, on the outskirts of Sendai when the tsunami waves came crashing in. In all, more than 700 people lost their lives in Sendai. The New Orleans musicians have two important stops in this city. The first, a concert with these young Japanese students, the Bright Kids. Many of them lost their instruments in the tsunami and got new ones thanks to the Tipitinas Foundation. So the concert they're performing on this night has a lot of meaning. For these young musicians who don't speak the same language and grew up in totally different cultures, there's really no difference at all when they play music. The next day, the boys are welcomed to a junior high school in Sendai where they'll take part in an international jazz exchange program. Inside the theater where they'll perform, they get a chance to hear their Japanese counterparts. And what the young New Orleanians witness is very impressive. Their performance showed talent and precision well beyond their years it impresses the young New Orleans musicians and their mentors. When Donald Harrison and his interns get on the stage, they know their audience appreciates and understands music, and Donald wants to teach them more. We're going to talk before the performance a little bit. And say that jazz is about instant composition. Which is a bit different from the junior high jazz orchestra's precision number. Then he demonstrates. The young Japanese musicians listen very carefully but seem a bit reserved and very disciplined. So when the Operi Walker brass band starts playing, it's anybody's guess as to how these Japanese students will react. But music is magic. It's not long before the second line umbrellas come out and all reservations are gone. The young Japanese musicians get totally into the air. By the end of the evening, American-Japanese relations are at a new high. All in all, it was a wonderful night in Sendai before the boys head off for Tokyo and the last leg of their journey in the land of the rising sun. For the 16 young New Orleans musicians, their trip is ending with a few days here in Tokyo, and it's a very important part of their journey. Tokyo is one of the most densely populated cities on the planet. It is a beautiful, bustling, cosmopolitan place with so much to see, and the kids will see most of it. But first, they have three important concerts, one at Tokyo Disneyland, another at the Tokyo Satchmo Fest, and then a special performance, a thank you performance, for the Japan Foundation, which is co-sponsoring this event with the Tipitinas Foundation in New Orleans. Before their concert for the Japan Foundation, Yoshio takes the boys and their entourage to a Tokyo restaurant for soba noodles. Soba is Japanese for buckwheat. It's something Yoshio believes everyone who visits his country should experience. He also tells everyone it's customary to slurp the noodles. The louder, the better. 
No, no, come on, slurp. That really was not an impressive slurp. No, see, last time I did, I whipped myself in the face with it, so... But you know, for a clarinet player, I thought you'd be better slurping. <laughs> that night, as the Tokyo skyline lights up in this beautiful city of more than 13 million people, the New Orleans musicians are getting ready to perform a concert to thank the Japan Foundation for hosting them. For Wilbert Rawlins of O'Perry Walker, it's a time for reflection. He has great hope for these young men from his school and believes the work he does through music will help keep these kids and others out of trouble and on the road to a better life. Statistics say that a child, a, children make the worst mistakes in their lives between the ages of, between the, the ages of 12 and 18 and between the times of 4 and 8. That's when most of the crime is committed with the young children because they're out of school. Most of their parents are probably still at work. You know, they, they, there's a lot of free time there. So the marching band or the band, it gave us something to do. It gave us a person, uh, by the way, Walter Harris, Herman Jones, Joe Mills, a person that was sort of like a drill instructor. He said no, he meant no. And music, he believes, makes a difference in young lives keeping kids off the streets and with a reason for hope. I will go on record, I will say, yes, I'm in the business of saving lives. And that's what I need to do. I need to say it's, it's too many of us getting killed. There's too, too many of us killing each other. It's just too many of us. And if I can do my part and I can save the 10% the of a school, because 10% of a school's population, those children, they, they fall in love with music. They fall in love with band. That night on stage, the Tipitinas interns and the O'Perry Walker Brass Band represent their city and country wonderfully as goodwill ambassadors from New Orleans. <laughs> the next day, the New Orleanians have their final concert in Japan and this one has strong ties to their hometown. Their mission to strengthen the ties between two cultures has been a complete success. So it's fitting that this finale is at Tokyo's 32nd annual Sachmo Fest. On this day, Japan and New Orleans are one. When Wilbert Rawlins said, too many of us are getting killed, no one could have imagined how prophetic those words might be. Several months after the Japan trip, one of the O. Perry Walker students, Justin Walker, was indicted with two other teens on second-degree murder charges in the death of a 17-year-old boy. As troubling as that news was, the other 15 young men who made the trip to Japan have all done remarkably well. Two of the O. Perry Walker students graduated with honors and received college scholarships. The other five boys did extremely well in school, advancing to the next grade, and even won a brass band competition. All the Tipitinas interns have had much success in school and on the professional level. And four of the young musicians were awarded scholarships to the summer program at the prestigious Berklee College of Music in Boston. And tomorrow, the Casanuma Swing Dolphins will arrive here for concerts at Tipitinas, the Satchmo Festival, and an appearance on the Eyewitness Morning News. The musical bridge between New Orleans and Japan has been completed.